All right guys, two weeks ago we had the opportunity to drive the redesigned GMC Canyon. This week we're driving the Chevy Colorado. Again, all new, redesigned. Looking forward to it. Let's get into the review. All right, let's talk quickly about the trims offered in the Colorado. First, Chevy is known for having a ton of different options and trims. So this seems a bit more cut back, a bit more lean than traditional. Here you get five trim options. The WT or work truck is your base trim. Then you step up to the LT and then the trail boss, which is what we're in here. And then the Z71 and ZR2 at the top of the line. The WT and the LT are both offered in two wheel drive or four wheel drive. The rest of the lineup is only offered in four wheel drive. Let's take a look at the exterior design. Again, this is an all new design for the Colorado. And before we even dive into it, I think it looks really good. Just like the uh, GMC Canyon. I think they did a really great job with that design. They did a really great job with this. So past that, let's look at the color. It is the Glacier Blue Metallic. One of my favorites out of the colors offered on this truck. I think my favorite would be the uh, black. Along with all the black moldings, I think the black truck looks really good and menacing. We do have halogen headlamps and halogen daytime running lamps. So these are not LEDs like standard with the rest of uh, the auto industry. So you get that old halogen yellowish glow. The front end is all black cladding with a black Chevy badge, the Trail Boss badge up in the front grill. Again, the materials aren't the best, but the look and the aesthetic really works, especially for a truck that's gonna be uh, put through the paces. You also have black belt line moldings here, as well as black wheel arch moldings. And the wheel arches are a little bit more squared off, a little bit bolder. Our wheels here are 18 inch dark alloy wheels running 32 inch Goodyear all-terrain tires. Your side mirrors are just standard black cladding, no integrated turn signal, no power folding. Door handles, don't expect a keyless entry door handle. You gotta pull the key out of your pocket. It is remote unlocking and locking, but you do have to have the key out of your pocket to do so. Along the bed, you get the Trail Boss badge. In the rear, standard tail lights, the Chevrolet logo stamped into the bed. And of course, the Colorado logo on the bottom driver's side portion of the tailgate. You do have corner steps in the rear bumper to make sure that it's easier to uh, get in and out of the bed. Even though this Trail Boss does have a two inch factory lift. So getting onto that uh, step is still a pretty good step up. But before we jump into talking about the tailgate and the bed, let's first talk about the full size of this truck. Your total wheelbase is 131.4 inches. The overall length is 213.2 inches. Width is 74.9 inches and the height is 78.8 inches. And this does have a 9.5 inch ground clearance where the standard truck has a 7.9 inch ground clearance. So while most of those numbers are standard to all the trucks, the uh, height and ground clearance numbers are specific to this Trail Boss. Now let's take a look at the bed starting with the tailgate. First off, it is a soft drop. And just like the Canyon, you do have uh, these locks that pop open so that you can get to an extra cubby here. This is called the Stow Flex tailgate, which gives you this uh, extra cubby to put gear in and stuff like that. So instead of having it into the bed, it's into the tailgate and the bed itself. You're looking at a length of 61.7 inches and a width of 58.9 inches. And your payload is 1,720 pounds. And again, that's specific to the Trail Boss with the four x four. And of course we do have a measuring tool on the tailgate itself. But with that, let's go ahead and check out the engine under the hood.
All right, it's time to talk engine options here. And there are essentially three engine options, although it's heavily based on what trim level you get, obviously. And it's not necessarily different engines. It's just different uh, levels. So for example, in the base truck, you get a 2.7 liter turbo in this Trail Boss. In the Z71, you get a 2.7 liter turbo plus. And then the ZR2 comes with the 2.7 liter turbo high output. So all basically the same engines with uh, a little bit different power levels. The standard engine comes with 237 horsepower, 259 pound-feet of torque with max trailering of 3,500 pounds. The Turbo Plus comes with 310 horsepower, 390 pound-feet of torque, which is what we have right here. And this thing can tow up to 7,700 pounds. And then the 2.7 high output turbo is 310 horsepower, 430 pound-feet of torque, and can also tow up to 7,700 pounds. So with that high output, you are getting the same horsepower, same towing, but much more torque. All of those engines are combined with the eight-speed automatic transmission. And overall, driving and power with this setup right here is not an issue. We'll talk more about what I think about this engine and this truck as we drive it. But before we can do that, let's go ahead and check out the interior of the Colorado. All right, let's take a look at the interior. Obviously, a big difference than the GMC that we drove, where GMC is geared more towards luxury. The uh, Chevy is geared more towards kind of the everyday, the worker. And while you can get a really nice interior in the upper trims, this Trail Boss comes standard with these black cloth seats. And that's exactly what we have here. But quite frankly, I like them. They're really nice. And it's probably the option that I would choose. They're not heated seats or cooled seats, but the driver's seat is eight-way power adjustable, which is an added option. And then the rest of your interior is all black on black, which I think looks really good. The style and aesthetic of the air vents are really nice. We do have our 11.3 inch infotainment screen with Google built in. You also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard on this. This interfaces with the USB type C or A ports down here. You can get a wireless charger pad, but this truck is not equipped with that. It is a push button start though, so we'll kick it on real quick. And again, everything menu-wise is the same as we had in the Canyon. Even the quirks with the lights, the only lighting controls that you have is here in the menu system. It's either buried here or you got a quick access button up there. Once you know it's there, no problem. But again, you have to know it's there. Below the screen are your AC and heat controls. And then below the vents, you have a few buttons here. This one for turning off the auto start stop feature your hazard lights, and a lane sensing system. We'll talk more about this as we drive. Again, a little cubby area that uh, can be equipped with a wireless charger, and this one's obviously not equipped with that. We have our traditional gear shifter, putting it into reverse, gives us our backup camera. And this one, even being the Trail Boss, does not come with the 360 camera setup. It doesn't come with all the extra cameras that this thing is offered with. So you can get, I think, up to nine or 10 different cameras, or at least camera angles in this truck. But this one's not equipped with that. Beside the gear shifter, we do have our terrain management control and all-wheel drive control. So you have your modes that you can turn the dial here and switch between. And those modes consist of normal, off-road, tow haul, and terrain. And if you get that ZR2, you can get a Baja mode. But that's only equipped in the ZR2. And as you might expect, the off-road mode offers more traction on loose surfaces like grass, mud, gravel, or deep snow. Tow haul optimizes performance when towing or hauling a heavy load. The terrain mode is perfect for tackling steep hills or crawling over obstacles. It can automatically apply the brakes for enhanced climbing control. And then of course your normal mode is the default mode that optimizes performance for your everyday drive. On top of those terrain modes, you can also push this in and go from auto to four wheel high to four wheel low to two wheel high, which is shown in our eight inch fully digital instrument cluster. That can of course be 
thumb through different styles, different features, depending on what you're doing. Pulling back a bit, you get to see our steering wheel. Again, just a kind of stock-based steering wheel. No nice leather on this, even though these are perforated edges. And you've got some controls here on the steering wheel as well as behind the steering wheel. Back here, you have controls. You only have one stock on the side of the steering wheel. And that controls everything from your bright lights to your windshield wipers to your turn signals. And then way down here to the left of your steering wheel, you do have a trailering control, which matches up with the advanced trailering package that this truck does have. We also do have a manual sliding rear window back there, which is an option on this truck. But other than that, it is a pretty basic interior, although you do have a lot of nice standard tech in here. But with that, let's go ahead and get this thing out on the road. Let's take it for a drive. All right, and as we get this thing out on the road, I'll tell you my one big gripe with the Colorado, which is gonna be all trims, I'm assuming. And that's the engine, not the power from the engine, but just the noises from the engine. There is a lot of knocking. It is super loud, even in the cabin. You do hear a lot of the turbo winding up and winding down sounds my son actually asked if this was a hybrid vehicle uh, because it sounds almost like an ev as that turbo winds up and winds down and if you're in stop and go traffic it's really noticeable and really <laughs> kind of annoying and then outside of the annoying sounds you have just the sound of the engine which itself isn't very nice there's no real exhaust that you hear some of that could be probably solved with some aftermarket stuff, but uh, as far as the base truck goes, it's not great. That being said, the road noise is very low, even with these uh, all-terrain tires. Wind noise is very low, even with this bigger, boxier, higher off the ground body style. So those are positives and pretty much everything else that I would say about this truck is positive, especially with the drive. Now, the reason that you would get a trail boss or up is gonna be the increased uh, ground clearance and having a more off-road focused truck. Unfortunately, there's not really a lot of opportunity for me to take these vehicles off-road when I'm reviewing them. So I didn't really get to test much of that out, but living with it day to day, having the trail boss trim doesn't really hurt it as an everyday vehicle. It is taller and a little bit harder to get into. And unlike the Canyon that we drove, that was the Denali package, this does not have side steps. So it definitely is a little bit more challenging to get in and out of for some people, for sure. Fuel economy wise, if you're looking at the two wheel drive, you're looking at 19 miles per gallon city, 23 miles per gallon highway. The trail boss here with the four wheel drive, you're looking at 17 city, 21 highway. So you're getting a bit of a hit, but that's to be expected. If you're going for just fuel economy, there are more fuel efficient trucks, but uh, I'm assuming that's not a huge concern. Along with the four wheel drive management stuff, you do get an automatic locking rear diff and hill descent control, which are great features for an off-roading vehicle. And overall, if you can get over the uh, pretty terrible engine noise, there's really nothing about driving this truck that uh, I dislike. Everything's easy to touch. It's comfortable to sit in. The materials are nice for being on the cheaper side. The digital instrument cluster, everything just looks nice, is easy to read. If you're hauling a family in here, it can get tight. We did have it packed with the kids, three wide in the back, but they definitely weren't fans of that. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Although again, it's doable. But before we get any more deep into uh, what I recommend this or would I look at some of the competition? Let's go ahead and pull over, talk about the price, and then we'll wrap up the video with some of my final thoughts. All right, and let's start to wrap this up talking about the price of the Colorado. So if you're looking at the WT in two-wheel drive, it starts at 30695 which is a pretty decent number. Some of the marketing material says that the truck starts under $30,000. So I'm not completely sure about that, but if you go to price 
one of these trucks. The very cheapest that you can get it is 30,695 without destination. The Trail Boss, which again is just a middle trim, but gets you all wheel drive standard, starts at 38,495, so just under $39,000. Our truck that we're sitting in here with a couple of options on it has a full MSRP of just over $41,000, which is getting up there, but it's still very competitive in the market. So uh, let me jump out. We'll talk about some of my final thoughts on the truck. What I think, would I recommend it, or would I look at something else? And then we'll wrap up the video there. So obviously there's a lot to like about the new Colorado. I was already uh, a bit of a fan of the Colorado and Canyon. And if you saw my Canyon review, I really like the design of the Canyon. I'm a big uh, GMC kind of aesthetic fan over what Chevy does most of the time. Obviously big competitors are the uh, Ford Ranger and Toyota Tacoma. You also kind of have the uh, Maverick and the Santa Cruz and the Honda Ridgeline. All of those are competitors as well as, even though they're not necessarily direct competitors of the mid-size truck market. At the end of the week though, I am a big fan of the Colorado. I'm a big fan of the redesign. I think it looks really good, especially this Trail Boss and up trims. I definitely think they look good when they're kitted out with a bunch of off-roading goodies. So if that's what you're into, these things are more than capable and uh, super good. Again, biggest gripe here is the engine noise, but sometimes that's a personal preference kind of thing. All in all, I thought it was a really good truck. Would it be the one that I would buy personally? I don't know. Plus the prices are getting so high for all vehicles, but especially just a mid-sized truck. I kind of would rather have uh, a really base, no bells and whistles type of truck and uh, then kit it up myself. But with that, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the new Colorado, especially this Trail Boss. Subscribe to the channel if you're into automotive reviews. We do a different review every week. Also go check out txgarage.com where we do a lot of written reviews as well as event news coverage from a lot of great authors over there. But with that, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching.